2023 was a record year for scammers with reported losses in excess of $10 billion, according to the Federal Trade Commission. A major contributor to that dollar amount, with over 55,000 reports being made, were travel scams. Security company McAfee reported that one in three travelers fall victim to some sort of travel scam, and a third of them have lost $1,000 or more. Now, these travel losses have been reported for all types of travel, but today I'm hoping to share some of the more cruise-specific travel scams you might run into with the hopes of saving our cruising friends from falling victim to these popular travel scams. Hi everyone, I'm Jamie from Sharon to Sea Travel. Thanks for joining me for today's video. And I got a fresh little haircut here. I hope you guys like it. Be nice with the comments, be nice. As always, if you find yourself enjoying the video, we would love for you to subscribe to the channel and check out all the other cruise-oriented content we have posted, from vlogs to reviews to port guides and so much more. At any time, just pause the video, hit subscribe, and then join back in. It's that easy. Today, I want to cover a little more of a serious topic, and that is cruise and travel scams. Cruise vacations have a lot of moving parts, and it's hard to stay on top of everything. On your cruise, you'll encounter plenty of fantastic people, and it's easy to forget that a handful of these people will be looking to take advantage of you at any moment you happen to lose your focus. Some scams are digital, some are physical, and some just try to take advantage of your good nature. The first key to not being scammed is to be aware of your surroundings and to remember the old saying, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. But today, I want to cover a handful of things that can result in you being taken advantage of. All right, first, I know that many people are turning to Airbnbs for their pre and post cruise stays. And this is a market where scams are on the rise. A recent report uncovered hundreds of fake Airbnb listings online. The Airbnb website will do everything they can to validate hosts, but the bad guys can still get involved. Once you book your Airbnb, look out for fake emails during correspondence with the host, check the reviews and feedback on the website, and make sure that you look out for brand new listings. Also, check links in your email to make sure that the hosts are sending you the correct properties. You might even want to validate the address with Google Maps. Make sure to document any issues you run into upon arrival to your Airbnb and be wary of any last-minute changes to your Airbnb agreement. A vast majority of Airbnb hosts are offering a great service, but keep an eye out for the bad apples in that bunch. Next isn't a new scam, but it's becoming more and more prevalent, and that is the public Wi-Fi scam. There can be many stops along the way when traveling for your cruise, and many of these places will offer legitimate public Wi-Fi, which can be great, but it can also open you up to local online hackers accessing your information on your phone or especially on your computer. Don't just connect and forget about it. Log in, do what you have to do, and log out. Whether you're checking to see that your work deposit went through the bank or confirming your hotel reservation, the door is open to bad guys, so make sure to close that door and log out as soon as you're done online. Even better, make sure to incorporate some level of internet security while traveling. Like maybe look into a low-cost VPN service like NordVPN or Surfshark. That's something that we started doing not too long ago, and it just gives us a little extra sense of security when we're online while we're traveling. Speaking of logging out, make sure to do it on the hotel TV as well. Hotels now have smart TVs that allow you to log into your favorite streaming services like YouTube, Netflix, Disney Plus, or Amazon Prime. The kids might even just automatically log in as soon as you get to the hotel and you don't even know it, but make sure you do not leave that streaming service active and logged in after you leave the hotel room. Best case scenario, someone's enjoying your Netflix account. Worst case scenario, someone enjoys pay-per-view movies and downloads and goes to work to access your personal information through those accounts. Another digital scam is the charging station scam. Keep an eye out for charging stations for your electronics that are off the beaten path. Scammers or hackers are able to access your electronics while you're charging them and possibly upload malware or other programs that will help them get their hands on your personal information. Also, beware of fake taxis, Ubers, and Lyfts. Have you ever been waiting for a ride to pick you up and someone appears and says something like, hey, you going to the airport or do you need a lift somewhere? And you immediately realize that they don't even have a vehicle nearby. They say they can save you some money and that their car is right over there. That just may be a scammer. Maybe it's a legit driver off duty and trying to keep the fare all for themselves. And maybe the savings sounds pretty good, but if anything happens during that ride, you will have no recourse to get that issue resolved. There have also been increased reports of fake taxis that appear real but don't provide valid driver ID and either have broken meters or no meter at all. If you get into one of those taxis, get right back out again. Heck, that guy might even load up your luggage and take off before you can even get into the car. 
Use valid sources for rides and only accept rides in designated rideshare areas to make sure that you don't fall victim to the fake ride guy. And speaking of taxis and rides, once you reach many of your cruise destinations, taxis will be the main way of getting around because a lot of the destinations just don't offer Uber or Lyft. Make sure when using a taxi, you establish the total cost of your ride for the amount of people that will be in the taxi before you start going anywhere. A $15 ride might sound great until it turns into a $15 per person ride halfway to the beach location you're heading to. Now here's a hot one, the wallet on the ground scam. I, I hadn't even heard of this one before I started doing some of the research of this video. Now there's a few versions of this one, but usually you're walking along, you see a wallet on the ground and you pick it up. That's only natural. Then immediately someone appears and makes a scene that you either stole their wallet or found it and took the money out of it. Either way, they're trying to get you to offer up some quick cash to make them and this entire situation go away. Who knows, they might even start to get local authorities involved and you never know who's real and who's an actor in the scam. Although you only have the best intentions, make sure to think before reaching for that wallet that's sitting there on the ground. Another version of the wallet scam is someone approaches you and presents a wallet asking if you just dropped yours. You immediately begin to you know, check for your wallet either in your pocket, your backpack, or your purse. Well, now the bad guys know exactly where your wallet is. So their friend follows you for a minute with the hopes of making your wallet his wallet. It sounds so simple, like it would never work, but it happens all the time. Also, always remember that free gifts are really never free when you're traveling. A seemingly nice person offers a charm or bracelet to you or your child with a sweet smile. You unknowingly take the item and say, thank you so much. Then the haggling for payment or donation begins and you're being pressured to fork over some cash. Just like the wallet scam, you just want the moment to go away, so you dig into your pocket and donate to the local scam fund. Have this chat with everyone you're traveling with. Do not accept free gifts from strangers. Don't even put your hand out. Just say no thanks and keep on walking. Now, just like in the world of magic, sleight of hand is still a very popular method of perpetrating a scam on an unknowing victim. Pickpocketing is still an art practice in every corner of the world, but the methods are becoming more and more complex. Like, have you heard of the sauce scam? Someone loosens the bottles of ketchup, mustard, or other sauces at an outdoor venue you sit down to eat at. You begin to use the condiment and it goes flying everywhere. A good Samaritan comes up to assist in the cleanup efforts and moments later you're missing a wallet, a purse, or a backpack just like that. They might use the old bag swap where they exchange your bag of souvenirs from a local store for a bag from that same store, right, so it looks the same, but it's filled with old t-shirts. Also keep an eye out for the come dance with me pickpocket and the, oh, I'm sorry, I'm drunk and I bumped into you pickpocket. They come in all shapes and sizes, so just keep your valuables close to the best and you'll stand a fighting chance against these masters of deception. Currency exchange scams can take advantage of you and you may not ever even know it happened. Simply put, be aware of the currency exchange rate when you visit other countries. Again, a vast majority of places operate with high levels of integrity, but eventually you will find a business or a person looking to take advantage of your lack of currency knowledge and they'll inflate the price of something dramatically when you go to pay with US dollars instead of the local currency. Street games is another scam. This sounds obvious, right? But we've even been warned of this scam by tour operators when we were traveling to Berlin and overseas. They said there will be people gathered around and naturally you'll be drawn in to see what's going on. It may be the old three card Monty game or maybe the ball under the cup game, but it's not the game that'll get you. It's all the people in the crowd that are working together with the game. Those are the ones that'll get you, encouraging you to play, creating distractions, pickpocketing, digital theft, like connecting to your electronics when everyone's all bunched up close together to try to steal your ID or personal info. That digital theft may be the worst of them all because it can happen anywhere the crowds form. Museums, train stations, restaurants and bars, anywhere you stand close to another person, your digital information could be at risk. Make sure you use an RFID blocking wallet or purse to protect your personal information when you're traveling. Another unexpected street expense you could encounter is the picture scam. Actually, it could be on the street, on the beach, or anywhere else. A guy with an iguana, a woman with a parrot, a person with an extremely fake-looking Spider-Man costume on. They approach you and offer to take a picture. As soon as the camera button is clicked, they begin to hassle you for a donation or a fee. My best tip is to learn how to say no thank you in the local language, and that'll usually send them on their way looking for the next innocent victim. Now, most of these scams can be encountered during any type of travel, but there's a few scams that are more specific to cruisers, and they usually occur when cruisers are engaged in cruise-oriented online groups. Watch out for the fake travel professional. 
There's many new cruisers that'll ask, what's the best way to book a cruise in an online group? And immediately 20 different people will either recommend someone or they'll say, oh yeah, I can, I can. Next thing you know, they point you to a colorful website that asks for your personal information. Or maybe they say they can book the cruise for you, just send them the money. Unfortunately, many of these people are scammers. So make sure to use a valid, legitimate travel professional that can be verified online whenever you choose to book your cruise. There can also be many fake profiles online in these cruise groups. We heard of a cruise group where someone said they're making cruise t-shirts and collected money from a number of people in the group, only to disappear from the group and leave many cruisers shirtless. There can be other scams like the cruise duck scam where people say they bought all these ducks but they can't go on their cruise and they can't use them and they try to sell them in the group. Now I'm not trying to start any more cruise duck controversy, believe me, but this is a real scam. Then there's the gift card scam where someone says they bought a gift card online, they canceled their cruise, and they're trying to sell the gift card on the cheap. Then you find out the gift card's fake or has already been used. Just remember that not everyone in these online groups has the best intentions, and while the people running the group might be trying hard to monitor fake group activity, inevitably someone slips into the group with bad intentions and ruins the fun for everyone. The final scam I want to cover is the fake product scam. Whether you're in a cruise port or you've ventured out into town, beware of fake items. And I'm not just talking about the fake Gucci pocketbooks. You know, the ones that are usually $500, but you can get it here for $49.99. Or the fake sunglasses for $10. You know, not the Oakleys, but the Folkleys is what we like to call them. I'm talking about the new scam trend of fake food and drink items. Don't buy alcohol to take home from a street corner vendor. That alcohol could be tainted, but it could also just be fake. Another current scam is the fake vanilla. That's right, many people are reporting that they purchased what they hope is real vanilla, you know, to take home for baking and things, and they're getting home to find their bottle is just filled with water. Also watch out for fake electronics as well as the old switcheroo. While packing up your purchase, you could be sitting there chatting with the cashier and someone who's bagging up your stuff slips the wrong item into your bag and you don't realize it till you get back to your cruise cabin. I'm not even sure how to tell you to check for some of these things besides just make sure if you purchase something, confirm that it's in a sealed, tamper-proof container. And if you go into an empty souvenir shop, there might be a reason it's empty. So maybe try another one with a little more steady flow of traffic. Whew. Well, there you go. I think that was like at least 10 different travel scams cruisers can run into, and that's probably barely scratching the surface. Have you ever been involved in a scam while you're traveling? Or maybe someone tried to pull one over on you, but you were just too smart for it? We'd love to hear your story, so please jump into the comments and let us know about your experience. Maybe it's something we mentioned today, or maybe it's a new one. Either way, it might just help a fellow cruiser out and keep them scam-free on their next vacation. I hope you guys enjoyed the video today, and it helps you to keep the bad guys at bay. Before you go, please remember to subscribe, hit the thumbs up, turn on notifications, and share the video with friends and family that might be traveling in the near future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.